Yana Wood was one of the first areas to be declared a national nature reserve. So we're celebrating our 60th birthday, our Diamond Jubilee. People come here and they think they've just opened up a whole treasure chest when they get here. They say, we didn't know this existed, it's so fantastic here. Somewhere where you've got a semi-natural woodland of this size is extremely rare. It could have all been really different for the National Nature Reserve. It may never have become one because in the sale particulars it actually advised potential buyers that they may want to clear fail this area and plant it up with conifers instead. And that would have been a tremendous loss. We would have lost this fine, fantastic oak woodland and all the birds and wildlife that's associated with it. It's fantastic that there was forethinking nature conservationists around at the time who saw the potential in this place as an open air laboratory, somewhere where they could do research and find out more about nature conservation and how to manage these fantastic landscapes. Over time, the ethos of uh, having a ring fence nature reserve just for scientific research has changed and it's following recognition that you can have fantastic, beautiful places for wildlife, but actually places where public can you know, that people can actually access and they can have fun, they can, you know, you can hold events without any detriment to the wildlife interest, but with the longer term aim of actually getting people involved and connected with these places. Today we've had a fantastic day, we've had a spring woodland festival and this festival has been all about celebrating nature here on Dartmoor itself. in the ground, the people living in their houses go, oh, those creepy crawlies underneath our house, there's ghosts and ghoulies, I can hear them moaning, and I can hear them yelling, and I can hear them battering drums and playing horns, oh no! We've been supported by lots of community groups, the RSPB, Woodland Trust, Butterfly Conservation, the local scouts. Everybody's come along and they've pitched in and they've shared their enthusiasm for wildlife. We've had some, some interesting questions about birds and about wildlife generally. And it shows that people are taking moral interest. Uh, yeah, I've seen a flycatcher actually, a pied flycatcher when I was up at the car park. That's, that's quite a good thing to see around here. It's a great event, really good idea. I mean, I think it's good to get the public out here. Beautiful woodland, beautiful woodland. It's really good because a lot of people, they don't really know what goes on here. They know it's a nature reserve, but they don't know all the conservation management that happens here. Yeah, Max took me out to go and pond dipping and they found the tadpoles and some little larvae in the um, pond down there. It was really good fun. <laughs> We've just been showing the kids and the families um, pond dipping. We found a few tadpoles, frog tadpoles. A few, uh, well, one new, uh, lots of damselfly, uh, nymphs and mayfly larvae. With pond dipping, it's quite good for getting the kids involved, like getting hands on and enjoying like wildlife. So for some of them, it's probably the first time they've seen some of this wildlife, so yeah, it's good. Three worms, all different types, and we found I'm not sure what I found it. Quite okay. Well, what is it? Oh, it's there's something. I think oh, there's wow. something like that. Yeah. Do you want to look in the little ID sheet over here? See how it's all red with his little legs on the end. Well, if you look at that, then he's got something. They've got something on the other side. Yeah. Well, I think that's one that ends his head end with his legs. You can see today children are interested in the, the great outdoors. There's, there's a little bird called a pied flycatcher, uh, which the wood is renowned for, and they nest here in these oak woodlands in Devon, and that one I know has got a nest in now. 
Now, Pi Phi characters are interesting for a number of number of points of view, but one most interesting one is, is they have more than one wife. One male could look <laughs> yeah. after three females, at least. We're trying to find ways that people can get involved in all different aspects of nature conservation. If somebody's interested in bird watching or in wildflowers, they can come along and they can take on some research or some monitoring themselves as a kind of a loan project. Some people will come and help uh, on an event and uh, share their skills and knowledge with all the people that come on the events. Um, I've gone down a bit of the way and what we're finding is Victorian bedsteads. We found 1920s Art Deco handset for a telephone. <laughs> the ore that came up mixed with the rock went off that way. Some people come out and they do uh, management work to get involved in the reserve and make it keep it looking as beautiful as it does. We walk nearly seven miles every Tuesday up and down hill carrying ladders, looking in bird boxes, monitoring mm. what we see. There are two, over 230 bird boxes in this wood and we, we look in each one every every Tuesday, whatever the weather. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and we've been into schools and we've, we've, we've got them excited about doing bird watching and then they've come back and they've been involved in bird ringing project. Just like a rainforest, it's a really important wooden habitat. These damn humid conditions actually mean that all kinds of wildlife thrive up here. So one of the aspects we're going to look at today is the bird life. We're going to try and sort of like imagine the kind of birds that we might get within the woods and try and get these down on our branches in our carbs today. There's the grain running up and down like that. So we always want to be cutting and not tearing. You could probably go on forever in terms of how you, what art, art projects you want to do, whether it's local schools, whether it's purely about wildlife or just getting inspiration from being in a big place, a wild place. National Nature Reserves incorporate some of our finest uh, wildlife and geological sites, so they are, really are the jewels in the crown. It's because it's got the wildlife it holds, the archaeological features it holds, and the landscape value that it has from the far and wide. We look at what we see now, and it's a, a real credit to the people who took on turning this into a nature reserve that it's as good as it is. And I thank them for allowing us to come up here and find the archaeology. If nobody cares for them or values them, then, then why should they exist? So I think it's really important that we excite local people about these places and in particular the next generation of naturalists to see if you know they will take up the sort of the, the baton and look after these places in the future. Our role is essentially to make sure that the, the wildlife interest is maintained, it's kept and improved. It's about where NNRs fit in with, with the local ecosystems and where we've got their particular species that you know whether it's butterflies, birds or whatever. It's about using these places as reservoirs to to increase those species outside in the landscape. People tend to separate nature and man and put them in two different hands, but actually they're one in the same. And a lot of our natural habitat that people think is natural is actually man-made. Landscape's been formed by man up on the high moors, once all wooded and forested, now it's an open, an open apparently natural landscape. But it's, it's the hand of man that's made its way and a landscape like this, which is managed and coppiced, behind us we've got the, got the old mine workings, it's a man-made landscape but it's in harmony with nature. It's having these relationships with all these people that means that they feel connected already with the nature reserve and want to come and support it and find out more 
you get permission when you see that part of your community has been involved and it gives you permission to feel that you you have a small part of it, a small sense of ownership of, of that place. And when people have got a sense of ownership, they then tend to care for it better and appreciate it better and what goes on in it. Through by getting it into public ownership, we've, we've got this fantastic resource for all of us to enjoy for generations to come.